Hi everybody, today we're going to read this book called The Gizmo. Okay. I have never stolen anything before, that's why I'm not feeling so good. I think I am going to be sick all over the stall. I look at the electric gizmos all laid out for people to buy. What if I spew up just as I am taking something? What if I vomit right when I lean over the counter? Everyone at the market will look. The police will grab me. They will tell my father. It will be in the papers. Everyone will know about the boy who was sick when he was trying to nick. Go on, says Floggett. Don't be a wimp. He is standing there in his stolen leather jacket and stolen jeans. He's pointing at one of the gizmos. Quick, knock it off, he says. Why did I agree to this? Why, why, why? You promised, said Floggett. He holds up the spanner that he stole from the lady on the tool store. You promised to nick something if I did. I did promise too, but I was just showing off, pretending to be tough. What an idiot. I don't want to take anything, but I promised, and Floggett will tell the kids at school that I wimped out, broke my word. I couldn't let that happen, no way. I swallow and try to hold down my dinner. I look at the little man who owns the stall. He is sort of strange, like a man from another world. There's something not quite right about him. His eyes are wrong. When he blinks, you can see through them as if they are windows. It seems to be raining inside his head. He looks as if he could snap his fingers and turn me into a worm. I am scared of him and I am scared of Floggett. I am too scared to steal something and too scared not to. What will I do? The little man bends down to tie up his shoe. It is almost as if he is daring me to take something. Behind him I see a sign that says, Thieves will be punished. Quick, whispers Floggett. This is your chance. Go, go, go. It is now or never. I close my eyes and grab something from the counter. I don't even know what it is. I turn and run. I scamper off like a terrified rabbit. I hear Floggett's breath and pounding feet as he runs behind me. I run and run until my heart hurts so much that I have to stop. I collapse into a heap behind the hot dog stall. I wait for the screams and shout. I wait for someone to yell, Stop, thief! But no one does. Woo-wee, yells Floggett. You did it. You finally grew up. He pats me on the back. What a hero, he says. Floggett grins at me. He is glad that I have done what he has done. He is glad that I am a thief like him. We both look at the gizmo, which I still hold tight in my hand. It is shaped like a ball with little coloured windows in it. When I look at the windows, I can see that it is raining inside. The ball is made of steel and has a button saying on. But there is no button saying off. I have never seen anything that looks like this before. To be honest, it gives me the creeps. I do not feel like a hero. I'm a thief. Two minutes ago, I was a normal boy, just a kid who owned a pet mouse and a broken bike, with the best mum and dad in the world, and now I'm a thief. I have stolen something, and I don't even know what it is. I feel like a worm, a worm of toothpaste that has been squeezed out of the tube and can't get back in. What did you get, says Floggett. He stares at my stolen loot. That belongs to me, he says. I get to keep it for teaching you how to flog. You can have it, I say sadly. I don't want it. Push the on button, says Floggett. He does not seem quite so keen to take the gizmo now. Maybe he is scared of it. We don't know what it does, I say. Yeah, says Floggett. You'd better go back and pinch the instructions. A shadow falls over us. We both look up. A security guard is staring down. He wears a blue uniform. He's looking straight at us. Hey, you two, he says. Quick as a flash, Floggett jumps up and throws the stolen spanner into my lap. Here's your spanner back, he says to me in a loud voice. He bends down and whispers in my ear. Meet me at the pool. Then he turns and runs for his life. Come back, I yell. Don't leave me. Floggett looks back over his shoulder just for a second. Suffer, is all he says. Then he vanishes around the corner. I am left alone with the loot and the security guard 
and a very guilty look on my face. The security guard stares at Floggett as he disappears into the crowd. Then he smiles at me. The market is closing, he says. It's time for you to go. Thanks, I mumble. I stand up and start to walk, to walk towards the gate. The gizmo and the stolen spanner seem to burn into my hands. I don't want them. I never wanted them. I feel terrible. I do not like being a thief. I want to go back to being like before. If only I could turn the clock back. If only I could go back and unsteal the gizmo. But I can't. Suddenly, a good idea flashes into my brain. Why didn't I think of it before? I will give the gizmo and the spanner back. I will return them to the stalls and no one will know the difference. I will not be a thief anymore. I am so happy that I start to smile. It is as if I have just thrown up a bad meal and feel well again. I jog over to the tool store. The lady is putting all of her goods into the back of a car. Is this yours? I say in a trembling voice. The lady glances at the spanner and then gives me a funny look. So there it is, she says. I wondered that where that was. I thought someone must have stolen it. Thanks. She takes the spanner out of my hand. I go red in the face and stumble off. She thinks that I stole it. I can tell that from the tone of her voice. Now for the gizmo. I will give it back to the man with eyes like windows. Then everything will be back to normal. I'll be happy again. I hurry over to his stall, but it's not there. The homemade cake stall is there, and the leather belt stall is there, but there is no store, sorry, but there is no space between them. The gizmo stall was in the middle, but now there is no middle. Where's the gizmo stall? I say to the belt man. What gizmo stall? he says, looking at the strange object in my hand. There's no gizmo, there's no gizmo stall at this market. He looks at me as if I am a bit crazy, and to tell the truth, I start to feel as if I am. There was a gizmo store there, but it is gone. There is not even an empty space where it was. I turn and head out of the gate. I keep my eyes open for the little man, but there is no sign of him, not a trace. Now what will I do? I feel sad again, mean. I'm still a thief, and I can't take the gizmo home. Dad'll ask me where I got it from. I'll have to make up some story. Then I'll be a liar as well. There is only one thing I can do. I can't give the gizmo back because the little man has disappeared. So I'll throw it away. I pull it out of my pocket and toss it over the fence into someone's front garden. Then I head for home. I still feel guilty. But at least I am rid of the gizmo. Or am I? Something is in my pocket. Something made of steel. It is the gizmo. It is back in my pocket, even though I threw it away. What is going on here? Am I going nuts or what? I threw it over the fence. I know I did. And now it's back in my pocket. It won't go away. I wish I had never seen the rotten thing. Okay, let's see what is going on. I put the gizmo on the footpath and watch it. Nothing happens. It just stays there. Goodbye, I say. Goodbye for good. I start to back away along the footpath. I don't take my eyes off the gizmo and it doesn't move. Finally, I reach a corner. I turn round and run like crazy. I go like the wind. I'm the fastest runner in the whole school and if anyone can get away from the gizmo, it's me. I pelt up the road and along the railway bridge. When I reach the bridge, I stop and pat my pocket. The gizmo is back 